Asylum, Chapter Twenty Five. Twyla tucked her legs up beneath her and continued to stare wide-eyed at the door to the room. She'd lost track of the time. The constant glow of the artificial light that usually filtered through the small observation window told her nothing. There was precious little of it to see anyway. There was a pony standing outside her door, a broad hat haloed in the light, leaving all but the end of a white beak shrouded in shadow. Twilight suppressed a shiver as she felt his empty eye holes staring at her. There was no mistaking who her new observer was, even at that distance. She pulled the blanket a little tighter around herself, a false protection against monsters in the dark. It made her feel a little better regardless. Every so often the light would flicker and dim for a few moments, the only cue that time wasn't frozen still. Locked in mutual and silent observation, the shock of an early and unwelcome awakening began to take its toll. Erratic questions passed like shooting stars through Twilight's mind, bright but fleeting. How long has he been there? Why is he here? Where are the nurses? Am I even awake? The last thought repeated itself a few times in Twilight's mind. It should have been disconcerting, being unable to tell what may or may not be reality, but the corner of her mouth twitched upwards in manic amusement. She felt like crying. The frozen nightmare was broken without warning when he turned away from the window, the sudden movement clawing a strangled yelp from Twilight's throat. Trembling, Twilight tucked her blanket up higher, watching him like a hawk as he rooted around in his saddlebags. When he turned back to face the window, something glinted in his hoof. It was a key. The air turned to ice, her blankets doing nothing to keep the chill from digging into her bones. Her muscles clenched tight, freezing her in place and leaving her unable to draw in the breath she needed to scream for help. Petrified, she could only watch impotently as the stallion stooped down low and vanished from sight. Her ears strained to detect the inevitable creak of a retracting bolt. The silence was broken by the faint tinkle of metal as something small was shoved beneath the door. It danced and twirled across the tiles before coming to rest in the center of the floor, the brass surface reflecting what little light there was. The stallion reappeared in the small window as he stood back up, returning to his previous position. He made no other motion as he resumed watching her, the only movement from a thin strand of shadow that leaked out of his beak. It was only after her lungs began to burn before Twilight realized how long she had been holding her breath. Her eyes darted from the door to the key and back again. She licked her lips, her heartbeat deafening in her ears. She did her best to ignore the dread warming its way up her spine as she swung her legs out over the edge of her mattress. Cursing her curiosity, she stood up. His head turned to track Twilight as she moved at a glacial pace to the center of the room and paused there. She kept one eye on him as she bent down to retrieve the key, half expecting it to dissipate into shadow and mist. It was cool to the touch and bore the scratches and blemishes of a long life. The slender handle ended in the shape of a flower, showing a flash of craftsmanship on the otherwise featureless form. She lifted her gaze. W what is this for? The light bulb outside flickered as small wisps of some dark gas leaked from the nostrils of his beak. She wilted beneath the stallion's silent scrutiny. Swallowing the lump in her throat, Twilight crept forward until she was only an arm's length from the door. He was just as she remembered him, legs wrapped in dusty bandages, body covered in a heavy cloak and a pair of crude and well-worn saddlebags hanging heavy on his back. He was an anachronism given life, a scene from a manuscript about the great pestilence able to move about freely. A nightmare night celebrator with a costume pulled from the history books. Truly, there was nothing to fear from something so mundane and comical. Twilight forced a smile to her lips, careful to avoid meeting that empty gaze. Yes, comical. Steadying herself, she held the key out in front of her. Why did you give me this? She asked, barely keeping her voice from cracking. He continued to stare back at her as the unanswered question echoed around the room. Twilight's expression hardened. What is this for? she repeated. Tell me why you gave me this key. A streamer of smoke escaped from the nostrils of his beak, a black stain on the air itself that lingered for too long. 
Twilight was about to repeat herself again when his head snapped to the right faster than she could blink. More smoke bled from his mask as he stared off down the hallway. Silently, he turned from Twilight and began to march away. Twilight pressed her nose against the glass, trying to keep him in her sight. Wait, stop, what is this key for? she shouted. The lights flickered again and the stallion was gone. Twilight continued to stare out the tiny window for a few desperate moments before she finally exhaled, fogging up the glass. What are you up to? she asked softly, a hint of irritation creeping into her voice. Just another distraction? Twilight gave the key a squeeze, feeling the weight of it in her hoof. She turned away from the door and began the slow trek back to her bed. She took a few deep breaths, reining in her emotions. She was too tired to be irritated. After sliding the key beneath the smarty pants doll resting on the nearby shelf, she climbed up onto her bed and wrapped herself in her sheets. After a quick glance at the door to make sure she was unobserved, Twilight closed her eyes. She would hide the key tomorrow morning. Until then, she needed her sleep. She needed her mind clear if she was going to avoid upsetting Rainbow Dash. Lunch was as chaotic as always, the nurses and orderlies just small islands in a sea of hungry ponies. Despite the press of bodies, Twilight was quick to locate Rainbow Dash amongst the crowd. She didn't return Twilight's cheerful greeting, just sparing a momentary glance before turning her eyes forward again. What do you want? Twilight winced. Well, I just wanted to say hello and see if you wanted to sit with me. Why would I want to spend my lunch with an egghead like you? I wanted to talk about the Thunderbolt some more, you know, pick your brain a little. Plus, I wanted to introduce you to my friend Pinkie Pie, she's keen to meet you. There was a pause. Rainbow shrugged her shoulders. I guess. Just try to keep on a short leash, she gets irritating real fast. The line shuffled forward two steps. I will. So, how is Fluttershy doing? Good. Now that I'm back out of solitary, n no pony's gonna bother her. They know I'll mess them up if they even try. You really look out for her. Rainbow nodded. Ever since we were foals. What, here at the hospital? No, back in Cloudsdale. We came out of the same home. And don't tell me you two are related now. Rainbow turned to glare at Twilight. Foster care doofus. She laughed as Twilight's cheeks flushed pink. Oh, right. Twilight cleared her throat and reached into her pocket. Well, I have something for her. I think she'll enjoy it more than one of my, uh, superb drawings. There was another laugh as Twilight handed the gift over to Rainbow Dash. I totally knew it was gonna be a book. She'll like it, Twilight said defensively. It's about tropical birds, and she loves birds. Rainbow slipped the book into a pocket and turned away. Sure, just don't ever get me any lame books. As the line shuffled forward, Twilight rolled her eyes. And resist the temptation. It was a risk allowing Rainbow to deliver the book to Fluttershy, but it was the best way to pass on the notes squeezed between the pages without drawing any attention to herself. And if anything, her bibliophobia means it's a very acceptable risk. The rest of their slow march to the lunch counter was spent in idle chatter. As long as Twilight kept the conversation among a few narrow topics and resisted the urge to finish Rainbow's words when she began to stutter, she found herself able to draw Rainbow into longer conversations. By the time they had gathered up what passed for the day's meal, Rainbow Dash was as animated as ever. There was a clatter of dropped trays and raised voices from across the room. Twilight and Rainbow slowed their pace, lifting their heads up to try and see over the ocean of seated ponies. Twilight spotted Lyra quickly, remembering the last time she'd seen the mare, screaming her head off as a group of orderlies had stuffed her into a straitjacket. The stallion she was shouting at was just another patient this time, but Twilight could see a pair of orderlies moving through the crowds like sharks on the trail of some wounded animal. She's gonna end up in a lot of trouble if she doesn't shut her mouth. Twilight gave Rainbow Dash a curious look. What do you mean? That mare. She's been in solitary a few times. I heard her the last time they locked me up through the door, screaming about some conspiracy and how they're all hiding something. Her expression soured. The staff are a bunch of bullies here. They don't really want you to get better. They just want you to lay down and obey. 
The pilot's response was forgotten when the stallion reared back and struck Lyra, the crack of his hoof hitting her horn loud enough to pierce the hum of a hundred background conversations. Lyra stumbled and collapsed as an orderly tackled the screaming stallion to the floor. Yeah, you show them who's boss, Timber! Rainbow shouted as the stallion bucked the orderly off and tried to regain his footing. A few other patients began shouting encouragement, but their cheers were cut short when the second orderly slammed his truncheon into the stallion's side, knocking the wind out of him before the two orderlies piled atop him. It was over as quickly as it had started. The stallion's screams grew softer before fading away into unintelligible murmurs. A nurse stood up, an empty syringe levitating in the air. Rainbow smirked. He's gonna be gone for a while. Still, he got in some good hits. She mimed throwing a few punches. Twilight ignored her, watching the nurses gather around Lyra. While the orderlies cleared space around the downed mare, the nurses reached up to examine Lyra's forehead. A trickle of blood leaked from a cut at the base of her horn, staining the fabric on her dampener a dark burgundy. They shared a worried glance. Through the wall of onlookers, Twilight watched as one of the nurses removed a ring of keys from a pocket and inserted one of the many identical keys into the lock at the base of Lyra's horn. She gave a small twist and the magical dampener slid off of Lyra's horn. It took Twilight a few heartbeats to realize Rainbow was trying to get her attention. Yo, Egghead, you all right? She asked, waving a hoof in front of Twilight's face. Twilight blinked, her hoof falling away from the vest pocket where it had been unconsciously gripping the hidden smarty pants doll. Huh? You were totally spaced out there. She gave Twilight a once over. You're not one of those ponies that gets all weird around blood, right? What? No, I'm fine. Twilight glanced back at the group of staff, but the circle of curious onlookers were being pushed back by the orderlies, the wall of bodies blocking her view. She looked back at Rainbow. You've been here a while. Have you seen the nurses remove the arcane dampener from unicorns before? Akko, what's this? Twilight gestured to the metal and canvas cone strapped to her horn. Oh, those. Yeah, I've seen them take them off a few times. And all they have to do is use a key? No deactivation spell? Well, the rumor is that if you try to take it off without a key, it will make your horn explode or catch on fire or something. Rainbow grinned. You thinking about trying it? Because I've been hearing that since I was a little filly, and I'd love to know if it was true. Of course not. I was just expecting there to be another step. I didn't think that it makes the key pull double duty for the magical and physical locks. Rainbow's smile sharpened. Sounds like you've put a lot of thought into how to get one of those things off. Maybe, said Twilight, keeping her expression neutral. Look, Twy, I hate it here. It's run by bullies who do everything they can to keep me from getting better. And if I can't get better, then I can't join the Wonderballs. So if you come up with some brainy scheme out of one of your books that lets me get a little payback, then I want in. Slowly, Twilight nodded. I'll keep that in mind. Rainbow laughed and clapped a wing on Twilight's back. You know, for an egghead, you're not half bad. Thanks, I guess. Just hope I can be as cool as you someday. Rainbow puffed out her chest as they made their way to their table. She continued to chatter away as Twilight gave the occasional murmur of agreement, but it was all background noise to Twilight. It took all her self-control to keep her emotions in check. Every time they'd opened or closed her bedroom door, they'd been flashing the answer to her problems on their key rings. She didn't know whether to laugh or curse. Sitting down with care, Twilight contented herself with a slow, predatory smile. Weeks' worth of plans had been distilled down to one single goal. Finding the right key. The smile vanished as fast as that thought echoed in Twilight's mind, causing her brain to come to a screeching halt. Her hoof jumped back to her pocket on her vest, grasping the smarty pants doll through the fabric. No, she whispered. It can't be. Rainbow paused in mid-sentence. What did you say? She asked, spraying stale sandwich crumbs across the table. What? Nothing. I just, uh, need to go to the bathroom said Twilight as she shot out of her seat. I'll be right back. Twilight took off before Rainbow could respond. She felt the weight of the doll thump against her side as she weaved through the crowds, moving as close to a gallop as she could manage. She needed solitude. She needed answers. Logically, it was impossible. There was no clear rationale for the masked stallion to give her the means to free herself and escape the shadow's prison. 
Still, as she engaged one of the orderlies to escort her to the restrooms, her heartbeat pounded with excitement, her thoughts dominated by a single question. But what if... Only once she was safely sequestered inside the bathroom did Twilight manage to calm herself enough to take stock. After double-checking to ensure she was indeed alone, Twilight rushed to the nearest sink, withdrawing smarty pants from her pockets as she moved. Holding it steady, she carefully bit down on the loose thread beneath the doll's left arm before lifting her muzzle, pulling the stitching apart to reveal smarty pants' cottony innards. Twilight shoved her hoof inside and began rooting around like an uncaring surgeon. There wasn't much space inside the old doll, and soon enough she slid her prize free with a triumphant snort. It was a folded-up document she'd stolen from Dr. Rose's office, and she took care to set them on a dry piece of counter before shoving smarty pants back down into her pocket, already forgotten. She unfolded the papers delicately, not wanting to risk any further damage. There was a glint of brass in the bathroom's chemical light as she pulled the last pages apart, the key sitting in the center like a pearl in a folded paper shell. Ah, there you are, Twilight said as she lifted the key up with borderline reverence. The lock on her horn beckoned. The key wavered as Twilight glanced up at her reflection. Despite the rapid beating of her heart and the sweat still dripping off her chin, Twilight's excitement began to cool. She gazed at the key with a clinical eye. Despite the better lighting, her examination was no more revealing than the previous nights, as a hollow flower at the end of the handle the only decoration of note. There was nothing to suggest the key's purpose, no hint that it was meant to free her horn. Doubt settled over her thoughts as her natural caution reasserted itself. She rolled the key over in her hoof. An unidentified key from an untrustworthy donor that opens an unfamiliar lock with unknown consequences, she said aloud. It seems I'm at an impasse. Casually, Twilight lifted her gaze and stared directly into the mirror. She smirked. I knew you'd show up eventually. Her reflection chuckled. We can't all be as unpredictable as you, it said, favoring Twilight with an uneven smile. Besides, you're obviously in need of some assistance at the moment. And as much as you want to deny it, I am trying to help you. Of course you are, said Twilight with a derisive snort. If you don't believe me, then why did you come here? You could have made a decision about that key any time, anywhere. Instead, the moment you realized it could be something more than a mirror distraction, you went and grabbed the biggest mirror you could find. You want my help. No, I just want answers, Twilight said, putting force behind the words. She held the key out in front of her. What is this for? There was a sparkle of amusement in her twin's jaundiced eyes. And why would I know anything about that? Because your friend with the bird mask gave it to me, that's why. You both are playing the same game for the same master, so answer my question already. Does it unlock my horn? The reflection stared back in silence, tapping a hoof against its chin. I know what you're thinking, Twilight. You won't believe anything I say. There's no room in your delusions for honesty. You lie to your friends, to your family, and to anyone you meet. That isn't necessarily true, Twilight said stiffly. Stop lying! The reflection snarled as it leapt forward and gripped the edges of the mirror, causing it to shake in its frame and sending a surprised twilight stumbling backwards. Its face was contorted in rage, gnashing its teeth and sending spittle flying from the ear-to-ear -ear wound it called a mouse. You lie and lie and lie and lie and hurt and hurt and hurt and hurt, and I'm sick to death of it! The reflection dropped back to all fours and retreated a few steps, allowing its face to regain some modicum of normalcy. When it spoke, its voice was once again light and cheerful. You can't deceive me, Twilight. I know what you really think. Masking her disquiet, Twilight moved back up to the sink, keeping her eyes on her twin. If you know what I'm thinking and what I'm going to do, then how come I'm still resisting you? Why haven't you broken me yet? You can't break what's already broken. Stop calling me like that. It won't work on me. And if you're not going to give me anything concrete to use, then you're just as worthless as your silent friend. Twilight said with a sniff before she turned to leave. Her reflection gave a wet sigh. No, the key doesn't unlock your horn. Much better. Now I'll just have to do a little experiment to see if you are telling the truth. She said with a smirk, gripping the base of her horn. Twilight guided the key up to the brass lock at its base. 
The soft scrape of metal on metal taunted her as Twilight tried to fit the key in blindly, her false reflection offering no assistance. She ground her teeth together as the key refused to go in, popping out of the hole once, twice. Aha! Twilight declared as it slotted itself into place with a faint click. I guess my opinion about you was entirely justified. She gave the key a twist. There was a hint of amusement on her reflection's face, but it remained silent as Twilight struggled to turn the key. Only when she feared snapping it in two did Twilight finally relent. Just because you weren't lying that time doesn't mean I can trust you. Not when you're dedicated to destroying all that I hold dear, she said as she wiggled the key free. I have never lied to you. Horse apples, you're still up to something. Why else would your compariot give me this, if not to distract and confuse me? Her reflection ran its tongue along its rancid gums. You are sick and he's a doctor. Logic dictates that he believes it would help cure you. Logic? Twilight gave a short, dry laugh. I'm stuck in a fake world, talking to my reflection about a key given to me by a mute ghost pony from antiquity. Logic doesn't enter into it. Deny it or not, that is the truth of the matter. You are just too caught up in the lies that is Twilight's sparkle to see it. It paused. For someone who prides herself on being a scientist, you have a terribly narrow view on the events in your life. Haven't you considered that this all could just be in your head? Twilight narrowed her eyes. Reaching out, she tapped the key against the mirror once, and then again, letting the tech tech echo around the room. Tilting her head slightly to the side, she paused a moment before violently jamming it into the glass. Her reflection grabbed the sides of its head and screamed as Twilight gotched a deep furrow into the mirror's surface, lacerations forming wherever the key passed over its body. The other Twilight's voice mingling with the screech of metal on the glass until there were one single discordant note. When she stepped back to admire her work, Twilight was smiling. I don't know, you tell me. The reflection hissed back at her, thin runnels of black sludge oozing from its ears and the cuts across its torso. There was malice in those yellowed eyes, but before it could say a word, Twilight pointed the key at the mirror like a duelist offering a challenge. There's something else about this key, something you're not telling me. Now, what is it? The other Twilight's tongue darted out to lick up some of the gunk leaking from its wounds, all the while glaring back at her like a caged animal. Yes, there is something else, it admitted, paying no attention to the way its flesh began to knit itself back together. But you won't like what I have to say. What I know carries a price, and it will be painful. I will be the judge of that, said Twilight, not even attempting to hide the scorn in her voice. The other Twilight continued to regard her carefully, but the hatred bled into something close to pity. It gave a single nod, and the mirror was consumed by the searing light of a newborn sun, causing Twilight to yelp and raise a protective arm to shield her eyes. Spitting out curses, Twilight blinked rapidly to clear away the spots and circles dancing across her vision. Once she could focus her gaze, what she saw in the glass was enough to leave her chosen rebuke unspoken. Gone was the monster with the axe wound smile and mismatched eyes. In its place was a figure that could have been mistaken for an off-color Princess Celestia at a cursory glance. It was Twilight Sparkle in the mirror, but not. She was taller than before, filling up more of the mirror, standing with regal grace on what looked like the battlements of Canterlot Castle. A pair of wings were tucked in against her sides so that, like the rest of her, were bedecked in an assortment of gold jewelry that caught the light of the sun. It was the twilight of a little filly's dreams, a princess that was adorned and respected and utterly perfect in every way. That key protects the truth, twilight, and it is locked away for good reason, the false princess declared with all the stern force of a parent educating a stubborn child. One lock, two paths, each with a price. One you will not be able to pay yourself. You will have to choose which door to take when the time comes. Both will save your friends, even as you sacrifice them. Both will destroy the lies, creating truth in their place. Both will give you what you want, not what you need. Twilight tried to speak, to question her fantasy self further, but was struck silent as the imposter began to melt like a candle in an oven right in front of her, skin and feathers and jewelry falling away in clumps of liquid flesh. Despite the mutilation, there was no pain in her reflection's unblinking eyes, only a deep and growing sadness. Its voice echoed along after it had dissolved away into nothingness. 
and both will kill you. There was another flash of blinding light which faded just as quickly, replaced by a white-eyed twilight sparkle. She blinked, and the reflection blinked with her. Her expression hardened. Methodically, Twilight gathered up her things, folding up the key into the papers before returning them to their hiding place. The knots in the stitching meant that it only took a single pull of the string to seal them away inside the old doll. She slipped Smarty Pants back into her pocket before turning around and, with a face set in granite, marched out of the bathroom without a backwards glance. Pinky gasped when Twilight dropped herself down on the bench beside her, interrupting whatever conversation she'd been forcing upon Rainbow Dash. Whoa, what's the matter, Twilight? You look like you just found out someone threw away one of your books! Twilight flinched. What? Nothing. I'm just fine. She plastered a grin onto her face. How about you? Rainbow and Pinkie Pie shared a glance. Um, I'm good, said Rainbow, her eyes lingering on Twilight. Really, we're just peachy. We were talking about the Wonder Bolts and how hot school can be, and what our favorite lunches are. It turns out Rainbow isn't as grumpy as she seems once you get to know her a little bit. Pinkie ignored the glare from across the table. She gestured at the sandwich sitting ignored on Twilight's plate. So are you going to finish that? Twilight slid the tray over to Pinky, who attacked the sandwich with a muffled thanks. Looking over at Rainbow Dash, Twilight caught the mess uncertain stare. Rainbow, remember what thing we were talking about earlier? Yeah, what about it? Do you still mean it? Me? Rainbow checked around herself before giving Twilight a cocky grin. One hundred and ten percent. I'm no coward. Why? Come up with a brainy scheme while you were in the bathroom? Something like that, she said. I was given a crucial piece of the puzzle, and I think I know where to use it, but... Twilight let her voice trail away into silence as she glanced around the table. Both of her friends were watching her closely, hanging on her every word. She took a deep breath. She had to know. How far would you go to save the ponies you care about? As far as I had to, declared Rainbow Dash. There isn't a pony alive that could stop Rainbow D Dash. Pinky glanced away. Too far, she whispered. Twilight studied them both. Even if someone threatened you and you couldn't be sure whether you could believe them or not? I don't back down from any pony, Rainbow Dash said, banging the table for emphasis. Pinky bobbed her head in agreement. Yes, there isn't anything more important than being there for your friends, no matter what some grump I'd say. A thin, humorless smile spread over Twilight's face as she regarded the other two mares. She nodded before standing up. Thank you, that's what I was hoping to hear. Does it have to do with a, uh, really big mini you taught me about? Pinky asked, her furtive glances towards Rainbow Dash making it clear she wasn't sure how much she could say. Twilight patted Pinky on the shoulder before standing up. Don't worry, I'll tell you, both of you, more tonight, she said. She glanced over at the far wall, picking out Applejack amongst the rest of the staff, trying to grab a quick meal. Twilight gave the doll in her pocket another squeeze. There's someone I have to meet with first.